Nigel McGuinness, it mm -hmm. has been a few years since I last saw you. We Many were on years. a wrestling tour together, so I feel the most appropriate question before we dive into the serious stuff, how's life treating you? Fantastically, actually, yeah, yeah, very, very blessed. I mean, as you know, Sunday, the biggest show in pro wrestling history, certainly British pro wrestling history, uh, getting to call that, but my daughter, five years old, healthy and happy, my girlfriend, beautiful, still in love with me somehow after five years as well doing magic shows around the world and uh, yeah you know what, what more could I ask for and of course I feel like the Wembley magic is in the air I've mm. only been here for about 24 hours and you just hear people on the streets even talking about it AEW shirts are already appearing yeah so for you are you feeling that essence already being back home I, I was today when I got here and I saw Wembley Stadium and I walked upon it and as you see it's just such a big ominous building there it's like wow hey there, when you walk inside it it's going to be uh, it's going to be an incredible moment, yeah. Well, something very fun that you're doing is not only Wembley, but the day after you were doing a spoken word magic show. Correct. You've been doing a lot more magic shows, as you mentioned. So for you, how crazy is it to go from something like a wild event, like All In, to then doing your own show here in London? How are the magic shows going for you so far? They're going great. I'm very proud of them. Um, I think I'm more proud of my magic show than anything I've ever created, really? definitely. Because it's so personal. Um, it's a spoken word show in the sense of the first half is just me just detailing my career and using magic to emphasize certain parts of it. Okay. But the second half is an interview where I get a wrestler on stage and interview them and do some magic as well. But the whole impetus for this, the whole inspiration came with the unfortunate passing of Jay Briscoe. And that reality that you're not guaranteed tomorrow. And so the show starts with a video of me doing a magic trick for him. It ends with me piggybacking off of that magic trick as well. Yeah, and the whole story talks about, as I said, how you're not guaranteed tomorrow. And I think that's a universal theme that whether you're a wrestling fan or not, I think everybody identifies with it. You know, certainly after you know what's been happening recently. I feel like something that a lot of people don't soak in is the fact that we work so hard to attain these different things that we do. Like for me, I feel so grateful that my gig involves things I love, like music, wrestling, sure. traveling, mm. and now you're doing things you love between magic and wrestling. So beforehand, did you ever kind of think that was a possibility? Yeah, I, maybe not, no. You know, I mean, when I was young and the only dream I had was pro wrestling and it was very nebulous I didn't really know what that would look like obviously I thought it was WWF at the time and being a world champion and having millions of dollars and having a beautiful wife and kids and all that sort of stuff um, yeah, you did. And I don't think it Almost. ever would have worked out that way, you know, <laughs> even if I could have done. No, that's okay. it's but the, the reality is in many ways better. Uh, I can certainly speak from my experience that my life went in different trajectories that some would say were tragedies. But because of that, cliched as it is, it pushes you back in a more positive example. So, yeah, it's, it's fantastically exciting to be doing do all these sort of things. And, and it's a wonderful world in that regard because of technology. You know, it used to be whatever entertainment form you want to talk about, whether it's singing or whether it's wrestling or whether it's TV, it used to be you start at the bottom level, you work your way up, you know, I mean, you couldn't draw money until you were at least in your early 30s in wrestling. But now, because of how fast everything moves, you got, you know, what, 21 year old world champion millionaires, and, and it just the, the world is out there for, for the taking. One thing I really wanted to ask you, kind of bringing it back to the magic do you feel like a magician should ever reveal his secrets? Or no? No. No. No, definitely not. I mean, it kills the, the whole. The magic? It kills the magic, first of all, but it's not, and it's, it's not dissimilar to wrestling in that regard. You know, you go to watch a magic show, you go to watch a wrestling show, you know what it is and you know what it isn't. But if you dissect it all of it and you know exactly how it all works, you lose that sense of illusion and that sense of emotion you get taken out of it. It's the same thing as we know how we make a movie, but if you see the boom drop into a shot, yeah, it takes it away. It's gone. It takes you out of the scene. Yeah. Now Penn and Teller, you know, they they made a career obviously of not giving away their secrets, but showing that side of it. And I think that's why they are geniuses at what they do. That ability to, you know, to, to Step on either side of that line, so to speak. Yeah. I went to one of those shows. Yeah. Vegas. Well, I I am that type of person where when it comes to movies and wrestling, I don't want to know. I don't even even at this stage now, I don't read the dirt sheets. I don't want to know anything going on. Surprise me, let me feel like a kid again. Yeah. With magic, though, I'm so sorry to say this. I want to know everything. 
But when you find out, it drives me crazy. You're disappointed, no? Now I'm like, oh my gosh, now I understand. Really? I feel a little smarter. Wow. <laughs> That's my takeaway. Though. I've never, because oftentimes, especially with my girlfriend, because she helps me out with the magic show as well, so now she knows how a lot of it does work. She's never gone. Oh wow, that's amazing. She goes. Oh, well, now it's ruined. No, I'm oh, the opposite. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, maybe one one time you'll have to yeah, teach exactly me something. Like maybe I said maybe. All right, maybe okay. we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Now, when we did first meet a few years back on that signing tour, mm. I remember we talked about movies very briefly. And at first, before you asked me my favorite film, um, you kind of were like, I think I might know what it is, but I'm not sure. You were judging me so hard. And then I said Shawshank Redemption, and your whole view of me changed, Nigel. It was so funny. So I would love to dive into some of your top films, because I do know movies are something you enjoy quite a bit. Do you remember my favorite movie? No, that's why I'm asking again. Yeah, yeah. This was like, I think we're talking five years we were just yeah I was just talking with my girlfriend and her friend this morning about my favorite movie actually yeah yeah I'll give you a clue Kevin Spacey although that's not perhaps oh, um, the usual suspects that's one of my top three yeah it's great great ending but American Beauty I remember telling you I hadn't seen it yet and then you went back to judging me again <laughs> I don't judge people for not seeing it. I, I judge people for seeing it and, and saying it. it's about a guy who falls in love with his daughter's best friend. Okay. You've See, seen it now or not? No, you no, still I still haven't. haven't. I want, I, I'm going to make it a thing. Please do go leave, and see it. I will watch it. Because oftentimes if you ask, it doesn't have to be a movie, a shared entertainment experience, someone's retelling of that experience says a lot about who they are as a person, certainly. And I think... If, if you look at something superficially, yes, that's what that that movie is about. It also says something about you, though. But <laughs> beneath that, that is a story about a man who has an unfulfilled life and finds out it's never too late to change his life. You know, and at the end, it ties it all together in such a way that it just. To me, it just connected perfectly. Yeah. You've sold me. I'm, I'm going to send you a message it. when I'm done. I'll let you know my thoughts. All right. All right. <laughs> well, everyone, this has been the awesome Nigel McGuinness. Nigel, best of luck this weekend at Thank AW you. All. I'm very excited about this. And, of course, to everyone watching, be sure to hit up AliciaToot.com for plenty more exclusive interviews and features. See you next time. Toot toot. We'll